So the whole OnePlus smartphone launch situation has been a bit weird and confusing lately and I don't just say that because I spend 90% of my waking hours absolutely smashed out of my skull. So for instance, ages ago, the OnePlus 10 Pro launched over in China and finally eventually made its way over to the UK, but there's still no sign of the standard OnePlus 10. Instead, we're apparently just skipping merrily straight onto the OnePlus 10T, which has literally just launched over in New York. So yippee hooray, no protracted wait for us Westerners hoping to get our mitts on the latest OnePlus kit. The OnePlus 10T goes on sale in the UK from August the 25th. You can grab it for 799 quid for the base model, otherwise 899 if you want to double up the storage and the memory. But is it worth that cash? Well, let's whip the OnePlus 10T on out of the box, take you on a full on tour of the hardware and the software, and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. As usual, you've got a lovely bit of red box action here. And inside that big old colourful box, you've got a OnePlus 10T. And you've got, I'm not even frigging kidding here, the heaviest absolute brick of a power adapter I've ever clutched in my life. It's a 160 watt Super VOOC effort. And I feel that if I dropped this power adapter on the floor, it would probably go through the floor and end up embedded somewhere in the Earth's mantle. You have a USB Type-C cable, also supremely red. And as usual, you'll get a few extra little bits chucked in here, including the usual charm and welcome letter, quick star guide, safety information, and uh, some stickers. Hooray! Oh, and a pokey pin device currently nestled on the back end of that welcome letter. And let's see what war great mate Pete has to say this time around. What's up, bitches? Glad you bought a new handset and not that stupid nothing phone. What a pile of wank that is. Ooh, look at me with my flashy lights. Ooh. Nah, doesn't say any of that. He's just banging on about how great the community is, all the usual guff. And that's everything you'll find in there. Sadly, no condom case bundled in there, so you will have to actually grab your own case if you want a bit of extra protection for the OnePlus 10T. And as luck would have it, just happen to have a couple of the official OnePlus 10T cases right here to check out. So you've got the usual sandstone effort. I guess this must be popular because they keep rolling it out for every single generation of OnePlus smartphone. And fair enough, this does add a bit of extra grip and texture to the arse end of the OnePlus 10T, but it completely covers up the lovely design and looks a bit bland, really. Or alternatively, there's the slightly more outlandish Glacier Matte case. Let's slip the old OnePlus 10T in there. It doesn't quite envelop the whole of the phone, as you can see there. The edges are still completely exposed. Uh, this has certainly got a bit more personality to it, that's for sure, but it is completely mental. Again, quite textured, so plenty of grip and all of that good stuff. And I do like these little bumps down at the bottom, which help to keep the phone completely flat when it is resting on a table or surface. So there you ruddy go. Oh my God, this thing is stiff. Oh, Jesus. All right, so that's enough wibbling on about power adapters and cases and all of that shenanigans. Now let's actually focus on the OnePlus 10T, which is once again another mighty 6.7 inch behemoth. Just quickly swap to one of these lighter wallpapers so you can see exactly how much that screen fills the front end of the phone. Very tiny bezels surrounding it. And that's despite the fact it is a completely flat display, as you can see there. It doesn't curve around the edges or anything. This beast weighs in at over 200 grams. You can certainly feel it's got a serious heft to it. That's for damn sure. Not particularly thick though, which is good. Even when you take into consideration that camera bump, it only barely juts out that back end. In fact, that camera bump has been more cleanly integrated into the arse end of the OnePlus 10T versus the OnePlus 10 Pro. There's no hard edges there, it's just a nice gentle slope. Kind of similar to like what Oppo did with the Find X5 series. And I gotta say, I quite like the look of that back end right there. It's aesthetically pleasing. This is the jade green version. Gotta say it's more of a sort of a bluey kind of hue than a green, but definitely an attractive bright colour and super glossy with a proper mirrored finish as well. So you can preen yourself using that arse end if you want to. Otherwise, if you don't like the gloss, you can grab the OnePlus 10T in Moonstone Black with a very different texture, so I'm told. So gotta say, overall, I quite like the look of the OnePlus 10T, even though it is an absolute beast and certainly fills your palm quite ably. But there is one controversial aspect of the OnePlus 10T's design, and that is the colon of the alert slider, which is completely gone for this model. And that is a real shame because it's a feature I absolutely adore on the other OnePlus flagships. Of course, it's already been killed off on the more affordable OnePlus handsets. And OnePlus said it had to axe it here on the 10T as well because they simply could not find room to fit it in as well as the likes of the dual cell battery and all of the other advancements that they've made. And hopefully the OnePlus 10T should prove pretty durable. You've got Gorilla Glass 5 front as well as back. You've got a screen protector on there as well. No official IP rating for the OnePlus 10T, but should hopefully prove quite resistant to water. Certainly splash damage and all that sort of thing shouldn't be an issue. 
So let's have a shift onto the software. And what you've got here is a good bit of Android 12, of course, with Oxygen OS 12.1 slapped on top. So it's essentially the same software setup as the OnePlus 10 Pro. And OnePlus is hoping that Oxygen OS 13 based on Android 13 should be available for the OnePlus 10T by the end of the year. Should be going into open beta for the OnePlus 10 Pro pretty much as this video lands. As for software support, well, OnePlus is offering three years of Android updates, so 13, 14, and 15 beyond that, and four years of security updates as well. So pretty solid and just happens to be exactly the same as what Nothing Phone is offering. I won't spend ages banging on about Oxygen OS and all the great features because if you're a OnePlus fan you'll know all that stuff anyway but basically you can drag down that notifications bar from the left hand side of the screen and it's the shelf over here on the right side. Fully customizable as ever so you can chuck in some extra bits, take out any stuff you don't want and change up the random little text greeting at the top even. You've got refreshingly little in the way of crapware stuffed on here to start with as well. No Instagrams or booking.coms or any of that shenanigans. And you've got all the usual features packed away in here, including those great mental health tools like the work-life balance. Good old Zen mode, of course, which can play relaxing tunes and also block all notifications and distractions. And of course, lots of ways to customize and personalize your smartphone as well, including a great selection of always on displays. This includes the ability to create your own canvas always on display based on any photo you happen to have in your album. Did I mention I absolutely adore how this completely captures the luxurious nature of my eyebrows every time. Or you can also do the usual Bitmoji bollocks as well. Actually, this one does kind of look like me 90% of the time. The customization options go all the way down to the very fingerprint animation that plays out every time you use that in display sensor. And speaking of which, it is just your bog standard optical fingerprint sensor here on the OnePlus 10T and it's quite low down. I'd prefer it sort of more round here. It's a bit of a stretch to get all the way down to the bottom end. But more importantly, it does actually seem pretty responsive, pretty accurate. I rarely have to double tap in order to actually get in there, which is good to see. Now as for storage, well, you've got a choice of 128 or 256 gigs. This is the 256 gig model, which costs a hundred pounds more. And if you pop open the old SIM tray, you'll see that there's no space in there for a micro SD memory card, just two SIM cards. So now the display tech, what you have here is a perfectly flat 6.7 inch ruddy massive AMOLED display with a full HD plus resolution. Even though it's massive, it's still nice crisp visuals. You have to get really up close and really squint really hard to try and even begin to see any individual pixels. Not really much of a surprise that it is another absolute stonking great display. You've got HDR 10 plus streaming support on this thing, beautifully wide viewing angles, and on the top brightness levels, the OnePlus 10T is perfectly visible outdoors, even when the sun peeks out from behind the clouds. It's not the brightest panel around by any means, but it certainly does the job. Unfortunately, the selfie cam orifice is centrally positioned on this display, so it does slightly intrude on the action when you do go full screen, but nothing too horrific. And if you dive on into the OnePlus 10T's display settings, you've got a generous helping of different modes and tools that you can play around with to tweak the output. Pair up to the P3 display gamut for instance, otherwise if you flick on down here you've also got a video colour enhancer feature. Half the time when I'm using this I've got to admit I don't even really know it's much of a difference but it's there if you want it. And of course you can play around with the screen refresh rate as well. It tops off at 120 hertz as you can see that it's set to 120 by default, otherwise you can bump it down manually to 60 hertz. And the OnePlus 10T sports a stereo speaker setup like basically all flagship smartphones these days. So let's just bump up the volume, make sure it's not crap. To use the Pixel 6 is also IP67 water and dust resistant. Quite rare at this price point. There's just a handful of other phones, the likes of the iPhone SE 2022. Spit, spit, spit. And that's some pretty solid output right there. On that top volume, that will definitely cut through a lot of background noise. That's for damn sure. And the stereo output's reasonably balanced. That bottom speaker's slightly more powerful, but the top speaker doesn't do itself any shame. Do itself any shame? Is that even an expression? I honestly don't even know. My brain is just like given up for the day. Is there a headphone jack on the OnePlus 10T? Is there bollocks? But thankfully you've got Bluetooth 5.3 wireless streaming support on this bad boy with Aptex HD support, got a bit of LDAC, all that stuff we know and love. Tried testing out with some speakers and some headphones. It's been absolutely fine so far, but stay tuned for my in-depth review for more on the audio smarts and all that good stuff. But of course you do get a good bit of tuning with that Dolby Atmos support. So as you can see, it's set to smart mode by default. You can change it up manually if you like, but it will tweak the audio output depending on what you're up to. So performance on the OnePlus 10T is powered by Qualcomm's fresh new Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset, like all big major rivals emerging right now. 
And so it's a bit of a step up in terms of the sheer grunt and also the energy efficiency versus the older OnePlus 10 Pro. As you can see, pretty respectable benchmarking scores there. Bear in mind, of course, I got the model with 16 gigs of DDR5 RAM, so that's going to help out with the old multitasking. Basically, you don't get any apps closing down in the background at all, especially helped along with OnePlus's system booster tools. I have seen a little bit of UI jank in my early times with the OnePlus 10T, such as with the live wallpapers not being the super smoothest experience around, but that's about it so far. And you would kind of expect that the OnePlus 10T wouldn't suck when it comes to gaming, but just to be sure, let's give it a whirl. And I, sure enough, even with a good bit of Genshin Impact, once I boosted those graphic settings up to the tipsy top levels, 60 frames per second, all that good stuff, it played like an absolute dream. There may have been one or two tiny little judders in the frame rate, but overall it maintained that 60 frames per second action, so everything was buttery smooth. Even when I probably got stuck into the action, get my absolute ass handed to me by this giant frozen plant thing, whatever the hell this is. And you got slightly improved cooling tech here versus the older 10 Pro as well, including a slightly increased in size vapor chamber. You've once again got the 3D graphite layers, all of that good stuff. And yeah, the OnePlus 10T did get a little bit toasty after just sort of 20, 30 minutes of full on Genshin Impact action. That glass back started to heat up a fair bit, but not to troubling sort of levels and not to the point where I actually saw the gameplay get throttled. And yes, you've got that new and improved OnePlus gaming board, which you can drag out at any point like so. This offers up some decent tools. You've got the performance settings. I mostly kept this at the balanced mode, to be honest, in Genshin Impact, and that coped absolutely fine. You can boost it up to pro gamer mode if you want, but that could make the temperature get a little bit cray cray. And play around with the touch response rate and everything as well, if you find that things aren't quite as sensitive as you want. You can bring up miniature versions of app, record the action, change your voice if you so desire. And I rather like the game focus mode as well, which just blocks all your notifications, does all this stuff here, basically. Well worth switching on when you don't want to be disturbed. As for the connectivity, full 5G support, of course, courtesy of the Snapdragon. And it sounds like OnePlus has integrated some of the clever connectivity tech from Oppo's latest flagships to ensure you get as strong a signal as possible at all times. Bit of 360 degree antenna action, all that really clever tech. And I just did a video recently about the Oppo Find X5 Pro and all of the excellent connectivity stuff built into that to help you get a really strong 5G signal. So if you don't know about it, you want to know more, go check that out. And then there's the battery, which is slightly smaller than the OnePlus 10 Pro. It's a 4,800 milliampere capacity cell, but it is a dual cell setup now. And if you like your smartphones to charge up absolutely crazily fast, well, good news because the OnePlus 10T does support that 150 watt SuperVOOC supercharge. And using that adapter bundled in the box, it'll basically take you 20 minutes to fill this thing from a completely drained state. So no more leaving it charging overnight, even though it does have the adaptive charging technology and all that good stuff bunged in there as well. You just got to remember to knock off the old smart charging features to fully unleash that super VOOC potential. And as usual, you've got plenty of safety features crammed onto this thing as well to ensure that the super crazy fast charging doesn't absolutely balk the phone, set fire to your curtains, any of that stuff. Got tons of sensors keeping tabs on the internal temperature, all of that good stuff to make sure nothing goes awry. And OnePlus is very confident in the charging tech. They reckon 1600 charges later, it should still be at least 80% battery potential. So basically go crazy with that fast charge and enjoy yourself, have a great time, should still hopefully be fine three or four years down the line. Unfortunately though, no there is no wireless charging support here on the OnePlus 10T which is a bit of a bum. And is that battery life any good? Well stay tuned for my in-depth OnePlus 10T review where I will reveal all but so far Touchwood seems pretty respectable. Now let's finish up this OnePlus 10T unboxing with a squint at the camera tech and if you squint really hard you'll notice that there's no Hasselblad brand on here on the 10T. OnePlus has straight up admitted that the camera tech packed into the OnePlus 10T ain't as premium as that found in the older OnePlus 10 Pro, but you do still get that dependable 50 meg Sony IMX766 primary camera sensor with optical image stabilization. Now this is the very same camera sensor found in the Oppo Find X5 Pro, the Xiaomi 12, the Zen 9, all kinds of premium smartphones. And it can be very good indeed when handled correctly. And of course you've got the usual plethora of various features and modes stuffed onto the OnePlus 10T. The AI mode when activated will suggest various different modes to switch to. So for instance, good old portrait mode if you are shooting a living subject. Got a night mode for your low light shots and if you dodge across to more, plenty of other stuff to play around with, including a full on pro mode. You can mess around with all of the usual manual toggles and you can shoot in full on raw format too. 
But sticking with the auto mode, here's just a small selection of sample photos that I snapped using the OnePlus 10T's primary camera. And stay tuned for my in-depth review, I'll be really fully testing out those optics to see just how good they are across a range of conditions. And if you want to approach things from a different angle, you can always swap to that 8 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter at any moment. Sadly, there's no uh, telephoto lens here on the OnePlus 10T, that is just a basic digital zoom. The final lens slapped on the back there is a bog standard basic 2 megapixel macro shooter, if that's what you're into. And then for your video needs, you've got a choice of 720p, 1080p or 4K resolution footage. You can shoot in 4K at either 30 or 60 frames per second. And again, here's just a quick sample of some of the footage I've shot in the first 24 hours with the OnePlus 10T. Stay tuned for that review. And then last up, flip to the front and you've got a 16 megapixel selfie shooter. Now, of course, centrally positioned rather than shunted off to the side, which is my own personal preference. And so far, this seems perfectly respectable. Day or night, you've got the usual portrait mode, smart. And if you want to shoot a video, well, you can do that at 720p or 1080p resolution. No 4K support for that front facing selfie cam, unfortunately. But again, seems to do the job absolutely fine. I've had no issues when I've been Skyping with the folks back home or any of that. The audio pickup's been absolutely fine as well. And that right there in a nutshell is the OnePlus 10T. And does it do anything massively different from other OnePlus smartphones? Not particularly, apart from obviously the crazy fast charging technology. So if that's something that really gets your gears whizzing around, then job done. Gonna be using it as my full-time smartphone, so stay tuned for an in-depth review to see just how good that camera tech is, the battery life, all of the bits that really matter. But hopefully that has whetted your appetite. And what do you reckon of the OnePlus 10T? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers.